This is your basic AC transformer operated power supply with your rectifier tube. This is basic before filtering or anything else. On a battery operated radio, an auto radio of the early vintage ones, they use vibrators. Mechanical read contacts make and break. This is your basic vibrator circuit. Here is the uh, vibrator coil. Here are the contacts and this is the read. As you can see the 6 volt in this case is applied in this fashion. This is your transformer primary step up transformer. The vibrating reed goes back and forth and while it's doing that it's alternating positive and negative here to simulate an alternating current. Being further on this transformer is the primary and is the secondary step up. This is what the inside of a vibrator looks like. It has the contacts, the reed contact arms, the outer contacts, the reed itself, and of course the coil up here. Then you'd have your buffer condenser and what that does is protects the contacts in the vibrator. It eliminates a lot of the spikes and so forth and sort of like tunes the circuit so to speak and without it your vibrator would last a very short time. Vi uh, buffer condensers usually 1600 to 2000 volts and then you say well hey I'm only operating 6 volts on this thing or 12 volts. Yes but the contacts as they open in the vibrator, there's a strong counter EMF pulse which will appear right across those contacts which could shortly burn them right out in no time without that capacitor in there. So this protects the vibrator. Here is um, your complete vibrator circuit with the rectifier tube, your filter caps, your buffer, capaci your buffer capacitor which is right here which uh, eliminates most of the hash as well as protecting the contacts on the vibrator. This is a hash filter here together with this eliminates a lot of the hash that the, rec that the um, vibrator normally would produce. Closer inspection here you have two resistors in this case 100 ohms that are across the contacts of the vibrator and these also help suppress a lot of the uh, sparking and so forth that occurs as the contacts break away. The make and break, well the break is the part that hurts these contacts and so with these resistors and the buffer capacitor this protects it but the buffer capacitor has to be the correct capacity and the voltage as I had mentioned before has to be about 1600 volts to 2000 volts because of your counter EMF that's a result of these contacts opening and closing when they open there's a tremendous surge and a spike coming through here and that is why they have a buffer capacitor. There's also it's got to be uh, the proper capacity to match the transformer. Of course you'll have a rectifier tube and I can't read this at all. I'm looking through the camera but it's going to have to be on the computer screen because before I can read it I think this is a 6x4. I can't see my eyesight shot the hell here. But anyways you'd still use a rectifier on these old radios because it's make and break with the vibrator. The vibrating reed goes back and forth and while it's doing that 
it's alternating positive and negative here to simulate an alternating current. Power transformer, it's stepped up to the transformer, but then it has to be rectified, of course, and run to an electrolytic filter. So it's still all the same. The only difference is you got a uh, mechanical device which will simulate a AC signal, although naturally it's not an AC signal. As you can see on the underside, it's got the electrolytic power resistors. Basic, very simple. Nothing too uh, complex here to uh, filter the, um, the hum out of it. It's the notation. If you ever work on one of these old vibrator type auto radios, tube type of course, which would be vibrator, um, you're going to hear a hum out of it, and that's quite normal because these things uh, give a buzzing sound. That doesn't mean it's defective. It just means that the contacts are making and breaking rapidly at approximately 100 to uh, 120 cycles per second, thereabouts. Depends on the vibrator and so forth. And uh, that means it's working okay and it's working here. Now, if you hear an intermittent buzzing, you know, or not buzzing at all, then you could have a problem with it. A lot of times, what you'll do is if these things don't work, when you get an old radio, just take the handle of a screwdriver and gently tap it. You know, and, and a lot of times it'll start up. The contacts are stuck, you know. If it's been sitting for a long time, it's going to get corrosion on it. And uh, sometimes you have to take them apart and gently uh, uh, burnish the contacts. This is what you use to burnish the contacts. It's a very, very fine, sort of like a nail file. It's made special for contacts, and you very you don't want to take material off. You just want to take the um, the um, coating off that uh, would cause it not to make contact. This is what it looks like. And uh, I've taken a number of these vibrators apart in the years. They're not an easy thing to take apart, though I'll tell you right now. It gets kind of sloppy. You take a pair of pliers and you go all the way around here and you, you, you know, like bend up the lip. And then you, the whole works will come out with this Bakelite base on here. It'll pull it out and then you'll get out your contacts. Now these are pretty, these are sealed, but even though they're sealed, they're not sealed good enough that you won't get any uh, corrosion on the contacts. So if your vibrator does not buzz, like I say, give it a tap, free the contacts. I don't remember what the uh, pins are. I think the two heaviest pins are, are the 6 volt, which would be the coil, and the other two would be your contacts. In this case, it's a 4-pin vibrator. These radios are relatively basic. You've got your intermediate frequency cans here, and um, audio output transformer, and there's a speaker wires right here. Temporarily, the speaker's been uh, cut out um, because it's in two sections. The other half's over here. Six AQ5's over here. Uh, this looks like a six AT6. After you know years of working with this stuff, you can just tell by the internal structure of the tube as to what it is. So. Uh, these old radios that have vibrators, well, they can be replaced with solid state. Um, they have much more reliable ones now that, uh, unlike when they first came out, they wouldn't hold up very good.